This video is about adding integers. There's a few different methods that you can do for this, and really it's about just finding what works personally for you. The first method we're going to look at is using counters. You might have done this in the past, maybe in sixth grade, where you had physical black and red counters and you counted out the numbers that were part of the problem. You can do this with actual counters, but it's not really practical to have plastic pieces in your pocket at all time, anytime you're wanting to add integers. So you can write these on your paper. Positive six, we're just gonna put that as positive, 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 positive. And then your negatives, I've colored them differently. You don't have to have colored pencils to do this on your notebook paper. Um, but you have four negative counters there. If you'll think back to kindergarten, when you first learned to add, you might have had little plastic teddy bears and you counted them out and you put three teddy bears here and four teddy bears over here. And then your teacher said, push them together and let's count them again. But your teacher didn't always have you plastic teddy bears. Well, then you learned to count on your fingers. One, two, three here and one, two, three, four here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hopefully you don't use your fingers to count anymore. It's more second nature to you, and integers are going to be that way. We just got some manipulatives for you for now to help you until you're more comfortable with them. So step one is to draw out your counters. I already have that done for you there. Step two is to circle any zero pairs. Well, let's think about what's meant by a zero pair. Last lesson, we looked at opposites. A number and its opposite are the same distance from zero on a number line. And when you put them together, they have a sum of zero. So I'm pairing them up and they have a value of zero. So I have four zero pairs. Step three, I'm gonna count your leftovers and that's gonna be your answer. One, two, and those are positive. So my answer is positive two. The second method is using a number line. You may or may not always have a physical number line with you. I have some in the classroom that you're welcome to use at any time, but you can always sketch one out on your notebook paper. So let's take that same problem, six plus negative four. What you do is you start at zero. So here we are at zero. And you're gonna move to the first number. Left, as you remember, goes to the negatives. Right goes for the positives. So I'm gonna move to the right because my first number is positive. Oh, I did that wrong. I didn't put enough on there. Let's add some on there. Five, six. There you go. You might make a little mistake like that and you have to extend your number line. That's okay. So we're going to come over six spots for that first number. Then from that spot, I'm going to move for the second number. So my second number is a negative four, so I'm going to move to the left four spots. One, two, three, four. So I've moved four spots to the left. What did I land on? I landed on positive two, so my answer is positive two. Let's do this again. Negative three plus positive seven. So starting at zero, we're gonna move three spots to the left, because I go left for negatives. And then I'm gonna move seven spots to the right for positives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which landed on positive four. And if you think back to our counters example, picture if you had three negative counters and seven positive ones. You're gonna have three sets of zero pairs. There's more positives than negatives, so that makes sense that my answer is positive four. Method three, using the absolute value. This is more of doing it in your head, which is gonna be more practical for you because like I said, you're not always gonna have counters in your pocket. You're not always gonna have a number line and it's not time efficient to constantly draw, draw out counters or number lines and you're gonna be dealing with numbers that are larger. 
Like if you have a negative 24, who wants to draw out 24 negative counters or make a number line that, that, that's that long? I sure don't. So something that you've probably noticed is um, if you, for some reason, didn't have the different signs, like you had the same signs, if we had used counters, nothing's going to cancel out. You're just combining them all together. Like I said, think back to the teddy bear counters you had in kindergarten. Plain positive numbers, 6 plus 12. What did you do? You just added them together. With a negative, that would work the same way. If I were to draw that out with counters, seven negative counters and four negative counters, nothing is going to cancel out, so they're all going to come together, and then my answer would be negative. So this is kind of an organizer for you. If they have the same sign, you do the sum of their absolute value. You add their absolute values, and then you're going to keep that sign. If you have two negatives together, then it's going to be a negative answer. So let's find the sum of 7, the absolute value of negative 7, and 4, which is the absolute value of negative 4. That's 11. And my rule is to keep the sum. So that's negative 11. Now what's, what's kind of sad is some of you will get tripped, tripped up and you'll be all thinking about negatives and you'll miss an easy one that's just a plain first, second grade addition problem. Don't do that. Just think about it. They have the same sign. So I'm going to do the sum. 6 plus 12 is 18 and it's a positive answer. Now when they have different signs, this is when it's a little bit trickier. When they have different signs, you're doing the difference of their absolute values. Like I said, think back to the counters. When you cancel them out, you're really just subtracting those numbers. So what's the difference between 11 and 5? It's 6. Now to decide what sign the answer is, you do what I call the sign war. Which one is greater? Do I have more negatives or do I have more positives? There's more negatives. So my answer is negative 6. Let's work this one. 9 plus negative 2. They have different signs. This one's positive. This one's negative. The difference between 9 and 2 is 7. My sign war, the positives win because 9 is greater than 2. So my answer is positive 7. Here's some practice problems for you. Pause the video, you work them out, and then compare with what I came up with. Okay, let's compare what you did. On question A, negative 16 plus positive 7. They're different signs. The difference between 16 and 7 is 9, and the negatives went out on the sign more, so the answer is negative 9. 4 plus 9, same sign, so you take the sum of their absolute values, which is 13, and you keep that same sign. Practice C, 14 plus negative 25. They have different signs. The difference between 14 and 25 is 11. And with the sign wars, the negative wins, so my answer is negative 11. Now D, I tried to put in um, some properties that you could have used to make that easier. If you're looking at my work, you're saying, but Miss Staley, negative 22 plus negative 18 sure is not zero. You see what I did? Negative 22 and 22 are opposites. They have a sum of zero. That's a lot easier to do in my head than to have to carry those numbers in my head. So I use the commutative property that tells me I can change the order and that's a legal move. So zero then plus negative 18 and now I'm using the identity property of addition because when I add zero to anything, I get whatever it was I started with. So my answer is negative 18. Okay, 